All right, we've got a question here. Uh, I've been vegan for three years now. Whole foods. Whole foods and low fat for some time. I ate about a kilo of vegetables a day, but it left me feeling all the time. Since yesterday, I'm trying to eat way more carbs, but I noticed that I'm still very tired. Since yesterday. Do you think I should just continue on the high carb path you know, will one, so basically the person's asking, will one day of eating, trying to eat way more carbs, reverse the situation, all right, um, so that's the question, uh, and I'm laughing just because it's like, it's, it's a cute question, it's innocent, and uh, then, then there's a follow-up question, um, Justin has asked the question, if you can have an experience with it, would you discuss if it takes a few days to get the energy back when having too little carbs for too long? I can definitely feel that my muscles are getting much harder all of a sudden. It always felt soft, even though I used to work out three times a week on little energy, but now it feels like they're ready to be fired up, okay? So Justin is seeing some improvements already, okay? Um, so he's gone from very tired to maybe tired but with hard muscles his muscles feel harder and they feel like they're ready to fight up so maybe he's gone from very tired to tired to now being ready to be fired up so again this is over a few days these emails the correspondence occurred so that's what i mean like i don't recommend a vegan diet all right i don't recommend a vegan diet i recommend my protocols and yes they are vegan but that's not the the magic in my protocols aren't because it's vegan all right because i mean as we see here justin he's been eating vegan for three years whole foods low fat kilo of vegetables a day it's tired all the time tired all the time now there could be other things going on as, as well but that's that's the majority of vegans out there their performance is pretty crap and the majority of people out there in, in general their performance is pretty crap regardless they're vegan or vegetarian or whatever and, and there's reasons for that. The main reason is they're not doing my protocols, okay? They're not doing my protocols. And that sounds so arrogant, but that's the absolute truth, you know? My protocols are designed for the best of the best athletes. And people say, oh, well, I'm not the best of... I'm not even an athlete. I'm an obese mum. I'm an obese dad. I can't even go up the flight of stairs without losing my breath, you know? I couldn't... I, I literally... I'm so out of shape, I couldn't run down the street to save my child from being kidnapped, by Bambi, you know, it's like, it, and that's that's where level we're at. And I don't say that to like shame anyone or make people feel bad, but it's a bad situation. Okay, it's a bad situation. If we can't run down the street to save our own lives or someone's lives or we, we 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 care about, then that's really that's really bad. You know, that's that's a bad situation to be in. So my protocols are designed to get the couch potato into their best shape ever. It's designed for the Olympic athlete on drugs <laughs> to be the best shape ever. So that's what we're talking about, the extreme examples. And people are like, Olympic athletes don't take drugs? The champions do. And this is where I lose people. Like, if you tell the average lay person too much truth, it's so far from their reality, they just turn off. They're like, what? What? You know, that's why it's so easy to scam people. I mean, look at all the brands and marketing finesses out there just scamming people. People are paying big money for liposuction or whatever and then the fat just comes back <laughs> well if I just suck all the fat off I'll be skinny and it won't come back yeah if you keep eating your fatty diet it'll come back just do my protocols you don't need liposuction and you'll never have to worry about getting fat ever ever again in your life and if you're fat at the moment you won't stay fat you'll just slim right out because your body can finally burn more fat than it's uh, coming in but yeah but basically I don't recommend a vegan diet because most vegan diets are sugar phobic uh, they're carb phobic, they're calorie phobic, they're like, okay, carbs are okay, but not too much. Okay, fruit's okay, but not too much. Okay, sugar's okay, but not too much sugar. Just anorexic, orthorexic, and that's why most vegans have very poor performance. And that's why I can turn up to a running race and win most of the time. And if I'm not winning, I'm in the top five, or the top two, or the top three, you know. Or maybe if it's a really, really big race, maybe top ten, you know. Or I'm the, f the fastest guy who's not like a full-time runner professional, you know. And I'm 45, okay, well, 45 in, in next week, so, that's just the deal, you know, like, and I wasn't a gun athlete at school, all right, so my protocols are designed to optimize your performance, and yes, they are vegan, but I don't, I don't, I don't promote a vegan diet anymore, 
I used to like you know go vegan, go vegan, and that was back in the day when it was good to teach that. But now I don't teach people to go vegan. I teach people to do my protocols. Because <laughs> if you go vegan, okay, I'm going to go vegan. You know, it's a good thing for the environment. Yes, good thing for the animals. Yes, and they're going to get online, and what are they going to learn? Vegan diet is carrots, a brown rice, and not too much food, and you skip eating you eat one meal a day and you fast a few days a week and you you know you blah 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 you avoid sugar and you have five cups of coffee a day and you know like you weigh yourself four times a day if you follow dr gregor's plan who's not even a real doctor you know he's never practiced as a doctor day in his life but he studied to be a doctor you know but it doesn't matter if he's a doctor or not what matters is program is crap all their protocols are crap out there they all contradict themselves they all say, most of them say, white rice is bad, bacon is better. Michael Greger, Dr. Greger says, bacon is better than white rice. <laughs> so if you're a vegan and you hear bacon is bad for you, but bacon is worse than white rice, you're going to be like, damn, I'm never going to eat white rice again. And so you're going to eat brown rice, not, mu- not, enough, not much of it, and you'll avoid sugar, and you'll have the fitness and physique level of Michael Greger. Yeah. And that's okay if that's what you want. If that's your goal in life, to be Gregor's fitness and Gregor's body comp, you know, you walk down the beach and you take your shirt off and you look like Gregor, people, like, people come up to you, oh, are, you, are you Dr. Gregor? If that's your goal, then that's awesome, you know what I mean? If your goal is to stand on the, on, a, on the front line of a running race and have people look over you and go, shit, this person's lean, they might win today, you know, I'll better keep an eye on them, then, then listen to me. If your goal is to be, you know, have a kickboxer physique, you know, then listen to me. If your goal is to just slim down and be a very feminine looking woman, you know, or, you know, just optimize your aesthetics, because yeah, not everyone has a ballerina body. So let's be honest with that. Some some women aren't designed to be ballerinas, and some women are. Some women are designed to be a bit more curvy, and that's fine. But if you want your optimized feminine aesthetic, then I'm the person for you. My protocols work unrivaled. So in terms of energy, what is energy? Energy is what we get when we go to sleep, all right? And nerve energy. It's like a, a car, a car, like a battery in the car, and you have your gas tank fuel. Well, now we've got electric cars, so that fucks up that metaphor. But let's just, let's just use the combustion engine where you have electric battery and you have the fuel tank, the gas, okay? Let's just use that metaphor. Yeah, don't, Elon Musk's going to fuck it up. <laughs> so we've got the, the the energy is when you go to sleep. That's your battery, right? You ever stay, try to stay up all night and you just can't even perform? You're like falling asleep, like, oh, I've got no energy, all right? That's, that's, that's energy, that's nerve energy when you sleep. And the next one we've got in the car is the fuel, the gasoline, the diesel, whatever you put in there, the methanol, whatever, biodiesel. That's your fuel, that's your, your carbohydrate, okay? That's your fat, it's your calories you're burning. And so if you don't eat enough carbohydrate then you know you can't really push very hard because you maybe might have energy but you just can't push you're like oh i just i got got no power my power is gone and conversely you could have enough carbohydrate in your system enough fats but you can't really tap into that because you just like you can't keep your eyes open you can't keep your eyes open right and there's then there's times where you're laying in bed and you can't sleep because you just don't have enough fuel to actually go to sleep you need that you actually need fuel and you come you should need sugars to create the dopamine the serotonin the melatonin that helps you sleep okay so it takes fuel to restore your energy and it takes energy to utilize your fuel all right it sounds a bit confusing doesn't it but basically you need sleep and you need carbohydrate and when you combine those things then you start burning fat you can move around and when you're moving around you're breathing more and then when you're breathing more you're taking more oxygen and it takes three kilos of oxygen to burn one kilo of fat. Because people say, well, but, but how can you burn fat if you've got carbohydrates in your system? That's the myth. That's the myth. Well, if that was the case, then why am I so lean? Are oh, you exercise all day? No, I don't. Stop with that bullshit. Go to my Strava and look at how little I ride and run compared to the average cyclist who out there is overweight. Okay? I trained very, very little on purpose the last five years. Just to prove a point. Because when you're as fit as me, everyone goes, oh, it's just, it's, you can do anything. You're just trained. You're really fit. You're just lean. You're just naturally lean. I'm not. Obesity is my natural form in my, in my, in my, in my family. Obesity is like just, just waiting for us. All right? If I ate too much fat, I'd be obese very, very quick. Okay? Regardless of how much I trained. It's, uh, I'm leaner now on 
1,500 kilometres ridden this so far this year when we're in August than I was when I was, did 30,000 can a year. Because when I did 30,000 can a year, I was just eating way too much fat. I was eating all these nut butters and potato chips and vegan corn chips and stuff like that. So I was just eating all this fat, but I was riding like, you know, 80 k's a day average for the whole year. For the whole year, 80 k's, like three hours, four hours a day, average. You know, sometimes more, sometimes less, but average, I did over 30,000 k's in a year in 2003. And I came back into Australia from a season of racing in Europe, like the hardest I've ever trained, and I was the fattest I've ever been. I mean, I looked healthy to most people, but cycle, some of my cyclists sense go, wow, you, you sort of, how many kilos you gained? You know, you look sort of tubby. Most people said I look healthy, but your cyclists like you look tubby. And I was, I was surprised. I was like, yes, well, how am I? You know, I'm not, I'm obviously not obese, but why am I fat-ish for, a, for, for how I'm meant to be when last year I was ripped as and I trained less? How did I get fatter riding more miles and racing the house down? I was doing all these, these kermesses in Belgium and just training intervals and after intervals after intervals and just doing the crazy Ks, man, like touring and racing, everything, just smashing out the Ks. And I was the fattest I've ever been as a cyclist. It's because I was eating too much fat. <laughs> I was eating more fat than I was burning, you know? I was getting so hungry that I was, I was eating my carbs, obviously, but I was also under eating carbohydrate, and then my body's like, just give me the fat, give me the corn chips, give me the vegan Nutella, there's a thing called Carabella. It was like a vegan Car- a Nutella style. So I was having that on like rice cakes and stuff. And all these, actually some uh, fatty fatty breads, fatty pastries. These vegan pastries I was eating, vegan donuts. And so I was eating all these vegan, vegan fatty foods. And I was the fattest I've ever been, despite training more than ever before. And then today, I'm, I'm it's the middle of winter. I've got veins in my legs, veins all over my body, lean as... And I've done the less training. But this year I've eaten such little fat. I've been really, really militant with fat intake because I have a cat fur allergy. And uh, these cats at our place, you know, they've just forced me to be even more low fat. And it's been great. It's been a blessing. So I'm like, damn, like, I thought I was eating low fat before, but now I'm eating really low fat. And I'm just getting so vascular, you know. It's crazy. And but most people say, you, you look too lean. You know, I've lost so much fat in my body. I've got, I got zero fat in my legs. I could pinch my hand. My, my, I've got striations on my glute. My abs are just... I've just got, you know, zero fat on my body, pretty much. And uh, if I took some diuretics or whatever, like the bodybuilders take, then I'd just dry out like insane. But I wouldn't do that because diuretics fuck your kidneys. All those people who look ultimately shredded, 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 you know, the really, really dry look, they only hold for a couple of days, but they recycle the photo shoots. They're taking diuretics. So I would match that level right now if I took diuretics and just sucked off some water off my you know under my skin some sucked out some water uh, that's how I'd be shredded like that but I wouldn't do that just because you feel like shit and you just your kidneys just do not like that and I, I like being healthy all right <laughs> I like being healthy and I don't want to encourage that sort of bodily abuse of using diuretics to dehydrate yourself so you look even more vascular I want to give people an everyday look and this is where I am today so that's what I'm saying is it's, you know, and my energy now, man, it's just, it's just great. But I, my energy was great back then as well. Like in 2003, I was eating more fats, but I was still, eating, I was still, still cranking the carbs. You know, I definitely wasn't skimping on carbs. I, was, I wasn't eating enough. I was a bit unorganized. So I'd eat more fats to make the calorie def, make the calories, you know, the, the count b- better. Um, so, cause when you under, when you under eat carbohydrate, you eat more fat. So in 2003, I was training a lot. I was eating enough carbs to do the training, but I wasn't eating enough carbs to stay, say no to the fats. So I was eating all these fatty foods. And I felt great. I, mean, I felt amazing. And I feel amazing today. Okay? I feel amazing today. I always feel amazing because I'm always getting enough carbs to feel amazing. I might not all, in 2003, I wasn't getting enough carbs to always, you know, avoid the fatty foods, you know. But, that, but then, but it's good. It's a good experiment. But I still feel amazing. I feel amazing today, okay? I feel amazing if I'm using testosterone. I feel amazing if I'm not. You know, I don't abuse stimulants so I can get proper sleep. If you're using stimulants every day, especially past midday, you won't be able to sleep properly. Or I'll just take sleeping tablets. If you take sleeping tablets, you won't get your proper sleep, man. And you'll be groggy the next day. Like, it's just dumb. Sleeping tablets are dumb. It's taking stimulants every day especially past midday, every day, is dumb in my book. That's not my protocol, okay? That's burnout protocol. Do my protocol, you have the best energy ever. Don't listen to anyone else, okay? I say that sincerely. 
and it might sound, it sounds very arrogant, but don't listen to anyone else. Right? Just listen to me if you want your best fitness, you want your best health, if you want your best life, just listen to me. Other people out there, sincere but sincerely wrong, or you know, or maybe they're teaching my protocols or then listen to them. But people out there, calories and calories, they just they got eating disorders, man. They got orthorexia. Oh, don't eat sugar. Sugar's bad. It's like saying, don't use purified processed air when you go scuba diving. Just hold your breath. <laughs> processed air's processed air is bad. Just you should just hold your breath when you go scuba diving. Processed sugar's bad. Just just eat potatoes if you need sugar. Just eat some fruit if you need sugar. If you run out, just just deal with it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Or just eat unripe fruit and then rot your teeth out of your head because it's so acidic. But it's, these people out there, they just they mean well, man, but they're not getting the results, right? They're not getting the results. I mean, everyone can fake it on social media, but you know like my lifestyle, right? If you've been watching me long enough, you see my lifestyle, right? I'm living the fucking, I'm living my dream lifestyle. Emotionally, physically, you know, location-wise, financial, freedom. I'm living the fucking, I'm living my dream. Not the dream, my dream. Because my dream might be a total nightmare for someone else. I'm living my dream, okay? And if, if you're inspired what I'm doing, if you like the freedom I have, you know, then then listen to me, man. You know, or if you just want the energy I've got, okay, just then do it all. And, and I was the guy who had chronic fatigue. I'm not born with really good genetics for energy and stuff like that. I was a sick kid at school, okay? People are sh- Some people from school are shocked at how fit I got. Okay, they're totally shocked. And all natural as well. I can, that's what I mean, I can speak from experience with integrity on fitness and health, because I've done both sides of the fence, I've been the natty athlete for God knows how many years, like, so 1996, got my first road bike, 97, actually 90, 1995, got my first sort of mountain bike, it was slick, so let's say, let's say 95, so I get into cycling more, up until 2014 when I first used anabolics, so I did... It's like 19 years, 19 years as a natural cyclist, okay, so I've lived that side, and then the last few years, you know, enhanced, but, uh, so I can speak from both sides of the fence, and I can be transparent about it, I don't have to bullshit people, I don't have to lie, I can say exactly what I, and you know, people out there will lie about what they use or whatever, I don't have to, I can be honest right now, you know, I can be totally honest with you, because my goal is to be a coach, the best coach out there, and the best coach is the most transparent about what works and what they do in terms of, you know, whatever, training, health, etc. I've done all the experiments. I've experimented with the diet, you know, the, the animal stuff. The, you know, the, I've experimented with it all over the years, okay? I'm an experimenter. You know, this is, and that's why I can say my protocols are the best, all right? A vegan diet isn't good, man. A vegan diet isn't good for you, okay? In 2022, it's not. Because a vegan diet in 2022 involves orthorexia. It involves sugar phobia. It involves stimulant abuse. But that the most of the vegan authors out there say, you know, stimulants every day is good for you. <laughs> Literally, they they say that. You know, just off the top of my head, you got Gregor saying that. You got that sugar, not sugar. Um, what's his called? I forget his name. Um, you know, the guy in Sydney, the Bondi guy, proof plant proof or something, saying caffeine's healthy, sugar's bad. That guy takes a shit ton of testosterone, man. He's bullshitting. You know, he's bullshitting. He never answers those questions. He's, oh, I don't use steroids. Oh, I don't know. Come on, man. In my opinion, I bet, I bet my life on it. You know, all those Bondi guys juice. You know, vegan or otherwise, they're all juices, man. Which is fine, mate. Just be honest about it. Like, educate your fucking audience instead of dumbing them down with more bullshit, people. Like, I respect my audience. I'm not going to dumb you down with more bullshit, okay? There's enough people out there doing that. <laughs> people unsubscribe me. Unsubscribe for me because I tell them the truth. I don't care. Like, I, I don't want you to subscribe because I'm a fake fuck just telling you what you want to hear I want to tell you the fucking truth about your health and fitness what what, it, what needs to be done if you want to reach these goals that's all I care about as a as a coach right? it's not the money you know I don't need like look at look how basic my life is how much money do I need you know I, I charge I charge for my coaching I charge for my ebooks because otherwise people don't respect it but you know but my stuff's affordable right? it's affordable my retreats are affordable although they used to be free like this I make it affordable for people, but I still make people pay because in this world we don't respect free shit. Anyone proof of that? Just look at the oceans. The oceans are free. Look how much pollution we put in there. All right? <laughs> look how look how much we pollute the 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 oxygen we breathe. Look how much we pollute the soil, the land, the water. It's just, it's insane. So as humans, we don't respect what is free. 
but you know I'm not going to educate uh, I'm not going to dumb people down by just keeping you know the truth from them I'm just going to say it how I see it and fucking that's just no, that's, how, that's why I don't have depression because I go to bed every night knowing that people are listening to my content they're going to fucking win man and that man I fucking love that feeling people listen to my content I've told them the absolute fucking truth they're going to fucking win on my information alright I only speak the truth online about my protocols, etc. Okay? What to do. I'm only, only going to speak truth about that. And and you're going to suffer if you're thinking that what people say about me is true or whatever. I'm a Holly's a bad person, or he's this, or he's that, he's, he's a rapist, or he's a con man, or he's a. If you believe that's true, and so then you ignore my protocols, then, then you're, you're the victim, man. Not me. Not me. Alright? You can believe whatever you want, but, but just do my protocols. I don't, I don't care what you think of me. Just do the fucking protocols so you win, okay? But if, you, if you're if you about there thinking, oh, I'm not sure about this Harley guy, because I, I read on the internet, <laughs> his, you know, his, his, his crazy ex-girlfriend, Banana Witch in Cape Tribulation, said this or whatever, or some random in-the-closet guy from Norway made a five-part documentary about him because he hardly boned his girlfriend or whatever. Like, just, you know, like... Do what you want to do, man. It's your life, but you're the victim. I'm not the victim, all right? You're the victim. People try and slander me. You're the victim of that, if you believe that shit's true. I'm not the victim. <laughs> like, you know, I still wake up every day, living my dream life, and that doesn't change, regardless of what people say about the internet, you know? But you're the victim, okay? If you believe what they say to be true, and you go, oh, I can't do that because Holly's this and that, or if you believe sugar's bad, you're the victim, man. You're the victim. Me not. Me no victim. You're the victim. And that, that, that makes me feel sad for you. But hey, man, some people hate me that much. They don't care about the collateral damage. Like they're trying to attack me, but it doesn't, it doesn't hurt me. It frustrates me, but it doesn't hurt me. It just highlights what sort of person they are. That they don't care about collateral damage. And they'll just like let people suffer. And that's really sad, man. That's, 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 that's narcissistic sociopathism. And I don't hate any of my haters, you know. Uh, I, feel, I feel I feel sad for them, man. You know, I feel sad for them. Most of them, or actually all of them, were big fans of mine at some point, and I did something that pissed them off and made them feel hurt. So, and for that, I apologise. All right, I, I I definitely have said some things in the past, you know, that would have aggravated people, um, you know, and I apologise for that. You know, it wasn't my goal to to hurt people. You know, maybe I had a little bit of a <laughs> an ego moment or whatever, and uh, yeah, you know, we all do that stuff, so apologize to anyone out there who's offended by what I said, you know, but uh, again, if people want an apology from me, I'm willing to do that in public, not just privately, like if someone wants an apology from me, if, they, if someone out there really feels hurt by what I said to them, then hey, jump on my podcast, I'll give you a public apology, not a little pissy in private, you know, and then whatever, like, in public apology, because for me, public, and an apology doesn't matter unless it's public, because everyone can be your best friend, you know, oh yeah, we're cool, we're cool, then in public, oh, that person's, that person's a douchebag, they're yeah, fuckwit, <laughs> so fake, so if anyone out there that wants an apology, I'm happy to do that, just DM me, doingwriters at gmail.com, but anyway, that's the, getting back to the, the, the you know, that's what's going on in the vegan, the vegan world right now, it's just, it's, it's just going, it's getting viral, but people are just going, oh, can't eat sugar, Got to eat fats, more healthy fats. But healthy fats, though, Harley. But healthy fats. Doesn't your brain run out of fat? Your brain runs on sugar. You know, the body makes fat for the brain. The body makes fat for the body. You don't need any much fat. Get some, a couple of grams of omega-3 if you want. You know, that's about it. Uh, get that from a supplement if you want to do that. Or eat some flaxseed or do whatever you want. Some fresh fruit and veggies. But that's just the deal. So do my protocols in uh, carbohydrates. The body runs on carbs, man. Just do, people, do my protocols if you want your best life if you want your best energy and forget the rest you can't dibble dabble okay you can't go well i'll do harley's stuff on monday and i'll do this cow restriction bullshit on tuesday and i'll skip eating all together on wednesday no no, no that's, just do my shit man just do my shit for a year and never look back all right forget everything else forget everything else you learn about calories or fasting or all that but bullshit it's just going to destroy your potential man and there's no one out there who's going to speak it like I do. And I've seen it, man. Some people out there aren't trying to con you, but they have an eating disorder 
and they just want to enable their own eating disorder by just telling you, calories in, calories out, don't eat too much, you know, they want to enable their own eating disorder by starving themselves, well, I'm a health coach, I have to starve myself to stay slim, so they use that as an excuse to starve themselves, or they go, or they hide behind veganism to hide their eating disorder or whatever, there's, there's, there's a lot of people out there like that, okay, me, I'm performance, you know, I'm performance based, okay, I'm performance based, whatever makes me feel good, lets me be the best person, and that's what I do, that's what I do, performance based, not weight loss based, yes, my protocol is performance based, and it will make you lean, but it's not weight loss based, as soon as you're weight loss based, you're going to lose performance, you're going to lose sexual performance, you're going to become useless to your partner, or you're going to become useless to prospective partners who go, wow, you're got a really shitty mood, you're cranky, you really get off the handle too quick, or or your libido sucks, or you're you, know, you can't hold an erection because your testosterone's so low because you're starving yourself and your body's like, we can't reproduce. We've we got none left calories here. You know, so, you know, like my, yeah, performance, performance, performance. Focus on performance in life. Life performance. It could be sexual performance. It could be mental performance. It could be physical performance. Just performance to be more stable than your kids or your partner. Like emotional performance. I'll focus on all that stuff. That's what my protocols are around. Enhancing performance across the board. From when you go to bed, enhancing performance in bed with your partner, or sleeping by yourself, getting some deep sleep, my protocols help with that, to waking up the first foot, the first thought in your head, okay, 24-7 performance enhancement is what my protocols are about, uh, oh, I just want to lose weight, no, 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 you don't want to lose weight, you want to increase your performance in life, okay, no, I just want to lose weight, well, look at all the people, <laughs> all I care about is losing weight, so people will give me approval. Well, they're going to disapprove of you because you're a fucking nut job to be around. Because you're so moody. You might be lean. But look how many lean chicks out there. Guys like, I would pump and dump, but I don't want to spend more. To, as soon as I'm nut, I want to get out of there. Because she's nutty. Or lean guys out there, fit looking guys. Who women like, yeah, he looks like a hunk, but he's just such... He's so insecure and he cries so easily and he's such a female. You know, I want a masculine man who's emotionally stable. This guy's just off his... His temper's too... F- volatile he looks hunky but his behavior is, is too volatile i don't want to be around him he's, he's not safe because he's starving himself you know so it doesn't matter how you look as if your mood's shit man all right look at the people out there who are looking great but can't get a partner and they want a partner but their moods are so shit all right this their, their mood is so shit their kids don't want to visit them no one wants to be around them they're in nursing homes by themselves because they're just so volatile or so moody or so snappy you know or they're on university campus, and people are like, oh man, this person's just a douchebag, they're so volatile, you know, so that's, that's what I mean, man, it's not about weight loss, you know, it's about performance, and the best lifestyle for your performance also happens to make you slim, unless, there's always an exception, I can't help one type of people, all right, one type of person out there, my perform, my protocols don't work for them, and that is sumo wrestlers, like, if you're a sumo wrestler, I can help you with, like, game, like, mental stuff. But if you do my protocols and you're a sumo wrestler, you're quickly going to lose so much weight that you'll be relegated to karate, okay? So if you're a sumo wrestler listening to this, then, you know, do everything else I recommend, but but do eat more fat, okay? So you can maintain your sumo physique. Eat more fat and eat more protein so you can stay over 200 kilo. You know, otherwise... For everyone else out there, my protocol is designed for you, regardless if you're an Olympic level athlete, you know, or you're a mum out there with three autistic kids just battling to stay afloat mentally, physically, financially. My protocol is for you. Hopefully, that answers it. Don't do vegan. Do my protocols, and uh, you'll notice things straight away. As we see with Justin, who asked his question, his muscles are already feeling harder after a day, two days. Okay, he went from very tired to tired to my muscles want to be fired up <laughs> you know how cool is that how cool is that people underestimate well they over people uh, people overestimate what can be accomplished in a year and they sort of give up but they underestimate what can be accomplished in you know five years ten years twenty years you know and so people give up often before they get the results or they want too much too soon but what everyone notices on my protocol is that within that first day of adding in refined white sugar as much, the, within the first few minutes of adding in as much sugar as your taste buds crave, 
your performance goes up. Your mental performance goes up, okay? Within minutes, people oh, I don't do sugar. Okay, then you're not doing my protocol. Go and keep doing what you're doing and keep fucking up your life and those around you. you know, you're, robbing, you're robbing your children of the energy you could give them as a parent. You're robbing your cousins and nieces or your staff members or your customers. You're robbing them of the performance you could give as whatever you're meant to be doing for them. You're robbing them because of your sugar phobia, okay? You're robbing your ascetics. You have dark circles under your eyes because you can't sleep properly because you're feeling sugar and your serotonin dopamine is too low. So you have, you're robbing your beauty. You're robbing your ascetics. Guys, you're robbing your masculine presence by being calories in, calories out. So now you're a moody little teenage bitch. It's 13-year-old girl vibes, which is okay if you're a 13-year-old girl, but as a man who's trying to give masculine presence, be doing calories in, calories out, the women are just like, oh my God, this guy's so beta, fuck, you know? And that's what guys like me, who look pretty average, can pull, you know, hot, 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 hot babes because of that consistent emotional state control because I'm always getting enough sugar, all right? I'm always getting enough sugar. So once when girls spend time with me, they're like, damn, Harley gives me the level of support and understanding that no one else has ever given me in my life. And I want to be near, I, want, I want to be around Harley. I want to be around Duran Rider. You know, I want, to, I, want to, I want to be around Daddy Dr. Because he gets what I'm trying to get at. He understands me. He supports me. And my friends, that's come, that comes from carbohydrate, unlimited, refined, white sugar. I'll say it again: unlimited, refined, white, processed, packaged sugar. Okay, that that thing has to be triggered, man. And I don't say that to be extremist or whatever. I say that because it's the brutal fucking truth. All right. People are under. People are drowning out there. They're gonna go swim on the Great Barrier Reef. Go diving. They're on the dive ship, and then the dive instructors, like dive masters, like, hey, right, get your scuba tanks on. And the, and the orthorexic person sitting on the boat. Oh, sorry, mate. I I don't do processed refined air. I don't 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 don't, 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 don't do that. You know, I don't do processed refined air that's packaged and processed in a can. I only do fresh air. I'm gonna hold my breath underwater and swim like a fish. <laughs> You know, the diet, what's the diet master going to do? Okay, buddy, here's a snorkel, here's a mask. You go hang out with the little kids, you know, in the, in the kiddie pool. Right? I don't do processed refined sugars. I just eat fruit. And when I run out, I let my performance run out. <laughs> or I eat more fruit. And I've got, I've got 10 kilos of freaking bananas in my gut. And I'm like, ugh. You know, I can't do shit because I've got to lay down and digest the food. Because <laughs> I can't just have a few hundred grams of sugar and water. That would be, that'd be bad. Because that's what I read on the internet. That's what the dogma told me, you know, but actually do it, man. Like I tell people to do it, do it, try things out, especially if there's no risk, all right? You know, you can't fly off a cliff, okay? You can't flap your wings. Don't try that. But if, if something's safe, try it out, man, okay? Don't hold king cobras like you see me do, but you know, like try the sugar thing, man. Do the sugar thing. <laughs> Put your orthorexia aside, people, and add in as much sugar as as your taste, just go hard, man. Just whatever your taste buds say. It might be five tablespoons. It might be a kilo bag in a day. Whatever. Just let your taste buds decide. Add sugar to your rice. Add sugar to your water. Add sugar to your cereal. All right? Get rid of your oils. But just add the sugar in and see what happens. All right? See what happens to your mood. See what happens for your desire for stimulants. All right? They'll either go to zero or be dropped right, 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 right off. When I go to the gym occasionally... You know, occasionally, occasionally I go to the gym, and every time I go to the gym, I see people looking depressed and sad. And then you have other people out there who are loaded in pre-workout powders, stimulants, caffeine, and they're all like buzzy, buzzy, buzzy. And I feel sad for them because I know that they feel like shit as soon as the drugs wear off. Or if they're training on drugs, stimulants, but in ketosis, not enough carbs, they feel like shit. Just they're in cortisol land, and that just feels dirty. It feels grimy. And the heart rate's up, maybe on clenbuterol and all that bullshit. And it's just like, man, I feel sorry for them, you know? And they don't look happy. You know, and I'm, I make conversation with all these people, and they just slightly like want to punch in the head. <laughs> they just really is like, eh, to the point, blunt, eh, no, don't talk. That's sad, man. It's really, really sad. Because people just fear sugar. And, they, and when we fear sugar, we don't get enough sugar, and then the cortisol's too high. And when the cortisol's too high, our relationships really suck. Our presence is not really fully there. 
and then it's just it's downhill from there, man. But hey, that's what makes that's what makes more money. You know, people with high cortisol, fearing sugar, they spend more shit, they buy more stuff, they consume, they're more insecure, they spend more money. They want to keep up the Joneses because they want to get approval because they don't feel good about themselves. So they want to get approval from other people, and it fuels the economy, man. Okay. So telling people sugar's bad, that's smart for the economy. It makes more sick people because people do more drugs, they start, start, start up late, they can't sleep, or they take sleeping pills which damage their liver, and it creates all these industries. Like all, think of all the industries out there. The road rage creates more violence, creates more police industries, and people want to have guns to feel safe because people out there on high cortisol, not eating it for a few days on meth, <laughs> doing crazy shit. So people feel un, un, unsafe out there so they have more security. That, that feels that, you know, it feels the lawyers, the barristers, the prisons, the sugar phobia, man, you know, the sugar phobia fuels most industries out there, if you really scratch it deep enough, it's not a conspiracy, it's just fact, have a look around, sugar is your friend, add in as much white processed refined sugar, what about raw sugar, Harley? Can, I, can I have raw sugar, can I have a cane, evaporated cane juice, it's all sugar, man, I want you to end the orthorexia today, and add in white sugar, okay? Just to break it, just to get it done, okay? It's not like drinking alcohol, okay? It's not like drinking, eating meat, all right? Those things aren't necessary, but sugar is, okay? Stop comparing it with other things. Oh, how are you going to eat a Big Mac then? Uh, well, I don't, eating a Big Mac's against my morals, okay? Even if it's from the bin, I'm just like, I don't want to put that in my body, okay? Sugar. Your body runs on sugar, okay? So it's very orthorexic to say, oh, I'll eat fruit, but I won't have sugar. I want you to end, people, I want you to end the orthorexia. Add in sugar to your food today. Notice the rapid improvement in your whole body, everything. Or, continue to stay in orthorexia world where you have low hemoglobin, you have low testosterone, you have low estrogen, and you just feel like shit. And you wonder why. Like, I've got to do some... I've got to go to a landmark healing course. I've got to go see Tony Robbins. I've got to go do some... No, no. You can do all that shit. I've got to, do, I've got to, I've got to take testosterone. You, you can do all that shit. And I might give you a bit of a buzz for a little bit. But eventually you'll be back in cortisol land feeling like shit. And when you're on testosterone feeling like shit, you're really feeling like shit. And that's what's called roid rage. Roid rage is when people take testosterone and don't have enough sugars. And now the cortisol is even extra high. And they do stupid shit. But it's not from the roids, it's from the lack of sugar, okay? And women out there as well, it's just like, you know, it's, just, it's crazy. They're doing estrogen stuff or whatever. It's like, you can do all that, but you, 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 you'll be even more crazy, right? Women who take estrogen, men who take testosterone are even crazier, crazier than if they're still doing low sugar. Because they, they're even more, they get even more psycho, okay? They go even more psycho. Like that's, you know, that's why steroids are dangerous for a lot of people out there. If mentally mentally dangerous, if they're not having enough sugar, then they're going to be having such a high cortisol spike. The higher your cortisol, the higher your testosterone, the higher your cortisol can be in the stress hormone response, and that makes you more dangerous. It makes you feel more shit. Okay, makes you feel more shit. That's why you never see anorexics doing anything crazy because they simply don't have the hormones to do anything crazy with. Okay, <laughs> I mean they'll sit around and cry, but. They don't do anything really violent because they just don't have enough energy to do that because their hormones are so low. But then you have people who have high hormones plus high cortisol from low sugar. That's when people do really dangerous stuff, okay? And prisons full of these people. Get the sugar in today. Get a kilo bag of white sugar. Put 100, 200 grams in, in, in some water. Just drink it. Just sip it. Just sip it, man. Sit back with your kids or do whatever you... Just at your workplace, at your desk. Just sip that 100, 200 grams of sugar and water. If you want more, have more after that. Just sip it down, man. Just as much as you care for. You know, it's basically like putting an intravenous drip in your arm. I saw they do in a hospital. Give you an IV of, of glucose, of sugars, refined sugar. Brings you back to life. And if you've, if anyone out there has ever done a glucose drip, remember how good you feel? Yeah. Yeah. You know right? That's what I'm talking about. Okay? This is like, so this is like a, a glucose sugar drip for yourself without the uh, expensive hospital bill. I talked to a guy one time. He's like, oh, sugar's bad. And, and I said to him, have you ever done a glucose trip in hospital? He goes, yeah, I, I did actually. I did, yeah. I was, I was out in the farm and I, I, got, I got really depleted and I passed out. And I woke up in hospital and with, with a sugar drip in my arm. And he goes, man, like, I felt so, when I left, I felt like I was in cloud nine. I felt so good. I was on a sugar high. You know, 
It's like, yeah, it's not a sugar high. It's just like, you're getting enough. Is all of a sudden you're getting enough sugar? <laughs> He's like, oh, no, no, it's bad, it's bad. I said, dude, how good do you feel? Yeah, I felt good, but no, it's not, it's not good, it's not good to feel that way. And I was like, dude, seriously, man, like, who told you that? Oh, sugar's addictive. You know, it makes you feel too good. You can't do it. I'm like, why don't you stop breathing then? Isn't breathing addictive? Isn't isn't sleep addictive? <laughs> you know, he's like, oh, no, it's, it's different. I said, how's it different? He goes, oh, it's just different. And I was like, dude, like, come on, man, you, you've tried the sugar, like, back, add it in. So who knows whatever he did, but it was a guy. I was on a farm in Queensland, and uh, he came to deliver some pipes, some piping, and we started chatting there, as you do out in the country. But I was just, yeah, I was just thinking, man, like, oh man, it, it, it pains me to see people really believe bullshit put out there by people who don't care about them. It's it's really sad. Anyway, that's the deal. Why vegans are tired? Because they fear sugar. Because it ruined my protocol. Same for anyone, regardless if you're vegan, vegetarian, or whatever. Insufficiency of sugar creates insufficiency of sleep which will create insufficiency of hormones which creates insufficiency of life quality okay natty or not you need your sugar and especially if you're not natty you definitely need more sugar if you've got kids you need more sugar all right if you're trying to lose weight you need more sugar otherwise you'll be eating that fatty food and adding more and more fat to yourself okay sugar burns fat all right because it increases the oxygen amount in your body because you can do more you can breathe more and takes three kilos of oxygen to burn one kilo of fat okay Never ever run out of sugar. If you do, you're running out of life quality instantly.